Here, back with another reaction video. This time, we're reacting to Why Didn't Hannibal Attack Rome? This is part seven of the Hannibal series by History March from the Second Punic War. And um, if you haven't seen my reaction to the other episodes of this series, I suggest you check the, the re my reaction to those out before checking this one out. So, um, <clears throat> so um, as I said, I'm, I know I'm a bit. Be I know I'm very behind on this, so I do apologise. I'm trying my best to get back up to speed. Now, at some point, I may react to um, one of the uh, one of the videos where it, it's like um, multiple episodes in one video. I don't know yet. So, um, I think after part ten, I'll react to um, you know the longer versions, which has multiple episodes after part ten. So. Um, so the usual disclaimer when I react to anything historical, if I don't, if I don't show so much as what's considered a proper reaction, it is probably obvious that I don't know much on the subject at hand, and um, and I'm probably trying to take on new information. And um, if I do know anything, I'll most likely pause the video, give my input, or ask any curious questions, which hopefully will be answered in the comments section below. So, um, so yeah. Uh, the link to the original video will be in the description down below. Please go and subscribe to History March and check out their channel. Show them all the support you can. And um, so uh, let's find out why Hannibal didn't attack Rome. So let's get this up on screen and get into this. So far, we have followed Hannibal on his warpath from Iberia through Gaul, yep. across the Alps, and yep. all the way into central Italy. Mm. He defeated the Roman legions time after time, yeah. and after just seven months of campaigning mm. in Italy, he stood at only 130 kilometers from the capital. Wow. The road to Rome was open, mm. less than 10 days' march away. But Hannibal's next move is a subject of much debate. And in this video, we want to discuss the decisions he made after his victory okay. at Lake Trasimene. Trasimene. But first, a big shout out for our friends over at Please Curiosity check out Stream, Curiosity Stream. The world's first streaming service that addresses our lifelong quest to learn, explore and understand. Their library features nearly two and a half thousand documentaries, which you can access for only our channel. Click on the link in the description below. And register using the code. Okay. The first seven months of Hannibal Barker's campaign in Italy were nothing short of spectacular. Mm. Despite nearly half of his army perishing in the Alps, he led his tired troops and defeated the Romans at Ticinus and Trebia. This won him the support of Gallic tribes in Cisalpine Gaul, many of whom joined the Carthaginian general. The march continued south towards central Italy, through the Apennine Mountains and the Arno River swampland. The four days it took to cross the swamps were particularly costly. Many of his men drowned, while others died from exhaustion. Hannibal himself lost sight in one eye due to infection. A great number of pack animals and horses were also lost, which caused a severe problem for his campaign plans. While he managed to patch up his baggage train by confiscating pack animals from Etruscan farmers, horses were far less common and needed to be trained for war. This left Hannibal's cavalry contingent greatly weakened for the upcoming battle against Flaminius. Yet, despite this setback, the elusive Carthaginian general remained hidden from the Romans after emerging from the swamp. Flaminius wow. missed the opportunity to attack Hannibal's weakened army. And just days later, the Roman consul would perish in the defeat at Lake Trasimene. Hannibal re-equipped his light infantry with weapons and armor taken from fallen Roman soldiers, and vast quantities of supplies were captured, such as food, canteens, clothing, boots, blankets, tents, saddles, bridles, and fodder. But, most importantly, 4,000 pack animals and 2,000 cavalry horses were captured from Flaminius' army at Trasimene, 
and another 4,000 horses in Mahabal's ambush of Sevilius' cavalry contingent. Hannibal was now able to replace the horses he lost in the swamps, bringing his own cavalry contingent back to full strength. After seven months of campaigning in Italy, Hannibal dominated the Romans in the field. Between the battles of Ticinus, Trebia, Trasimene, and the ambush of Servilius's cavalry, Hannibal eliminated over 50,000 wow. Roman soldiers, Jeez. a number equal to 10 legions. Mm. Now that Fabius Maximus was elected dictator, Hannibal was encamped just 130 kilometers wow. from the city of Rome. No army stood in his way, and he could have marched on the capital in less than 10 days. Mm. Yet, he decided not to. Let's try to examine why. Okay, now we're getting into it. In warfare, tactical objectives and strategic objectives oh, yeah. need to be connected in some form. Mm. Tactics refers to methods that an army employs in order to win battles. Strategy deals with broad objectives that a warring country has, as well as the means necessary to achieve these objectives. Yeah. Without strategy, battles are disconnected individual events. Mm. Without tactics, any strategy falls apart. In the Second Punic War, Rome's strategic objectives were to keep the territories it won in the First Punic War, and perhaps seize parts of Iberia. Mm. Carthage, on the other hand, sought to retain dominance over Iberia and its valuable silver mines, and win back Sicily, Sardinia and Corsica that were lost in the First War, along mm. with other minor islands in the Mediterranean. This would enable Carthage to regain its dominance on the sea. Rome correctly understood Carthage's objectives and moved to prevent them. Mm. Of the 11 legions that were in the field at the time of Hannibal's arrival in Italy, two were stationed in Sicily, okay. two in Sardinia, and two were sent to Iberia, mm. while one remained in Tarentum. Four legions were left in Italy to deal with Hannibal. At the time of the battle at Lake Trasimene, two legions were commanded by Flaminius, which were destroyed. The other two were commanded by Servilius, which were rendered useless after the destruction mm. of their cavalry, forcing Servilius to return north to fight an ongoing battle with the marauding Gauls. Wow. With the appointment of Fabius Maximus, Rome did authorize the formation of two new legions for the okay. defense of the city, an annual practice that became regular as of 217 mm. BC. But these legions likely were not fully trained and perhaps weren't at full strength either. Hannibal had a clear advantage in the field. Furthermore, he could rely on the 70 Carthaginian ships that roamed the waters of the Etruscan coast, only 120 kilometers from Hannibal's position. Why did Carthage send these ships so far into Roman waters? 70 ships was over 60% of their entire fleet. Wow. Since they were not carrying reinforcements, nor supplies for the army in Italy. Their presence near Rome itself, at the same time when Hannibal mm. was also so close to the capital, suggests that a possible land-sea operation was planned to take the city. The 70 Carthaginian warships would prevent Roman transport ships from ferrying troops from Sardinia mm. to the capital, while Hannibal attacks the city. The fact that supports this is the positioning of the Roman fleet. Of the 220 ships in the fleet, 10 were at Ariminium on the Adriatic coast. 150 were protecting the waters of Sicily, and another 30 were stationed in Iberia to support the Scipio brothers. Hmm. Therefore, only around 30 warships <coughs> were protecting the capital. With 70 ships, Carthage had a clear naval advantage hmm. for any immediate operations against the city, and on land, Hannibal was virtually at the gates, unopposed. Mm. To move on the capital after Trasimene would have made tactical and strategic sense. Yeah. An attack, a siege, or even a feint would have forced the Romans to withdraw troops from other theatres to protect mm. the city. This would have exposed Sicily, Sardinia, yeah. or Iberia to Carthaginian attacks. Mm. At the same time, Hannibal could lift the siege to deal with any approaching armies. This failure to create a link between the strategic and tactical objectives 
perhaps played a decisive role in the outcome of the war. Hannibal himself later acknowledged that this was a missed opportunity, but he never explained his decisions. Okay. Two main reasons for not attacking the Roman capital were suggested by historians. Hmm. First, that Hannibal did not have enough troops to besiege the city due to its size and its garrison. This doesn't sufficiently explain why Hannibal decided not to attack. Mm. Namely, during the times of the Republic, the population of the city of Rome was between 450,000 and 500,000 people. The entire population lived in an area of just 13.5 square kilometers. Wow, that's compact. The city was surrounded by the 11 kilometer long Servian wall, a stone barrier that's 10 meters high in some places. There were five main gates on major roads leading into mm. the city. 10 meter deep defensive trenches were dug up in front of the walls where the city faced open fields. These defences should not have posed a formidable obstacle to Carthaginian engineering abilities, nor was the city too big to be besieged mm. by Hannibal's army of around 50,000 troops. In addition, okay. even if the city's garrison of two legions were battle ready, 10,000 troops manning the walls and multiple gates would not have posed a strong enough threat to deter an attack. The second suggestion is that a naval blockade was not possible because the Roman okay. fleet would keep the supply lines open along the river Tiber. This would have been true had Ostia been big enough mm. to be Rome's main port at the time, but it didn't become a major port for another 250 years until Emperor Claudius expanded it. At the time of the Second Punic War, the majority of seaborne supplies for the capital came through the port of Puteoli. Okay. over 190 kilometers down the coast and were then transported to the city overland. Hannibal could have cut off these supplies by blocking the roads. Hmm. At least for some time, a yeah. naval blockade of Rome would not be needed and the Carthaginian ships could focus on preventing transports from bringing in hmm. reinforcements from Sardinia. So why did Hannibal, one of history's greatest risk takers, choose not to attempt to take the city? while he was arguably at his strongest and Rome was at its weakest. One possibility that is often suggested by historians okay. is that Hannibal's view of war was influenced by Hellenistic thinking. Mm. He was certainly an admirer of Pyrrhus of Epirus. Okay. Namely, Hannibal's view was that maybe the total destruction of the enemy was not needed to win the war. Instead, Battles would be fought until the leadership of one side conceded defeat once they realized that they could no longer win on the field of battle and stood to lose more if they continued fighting. Therefore, he may have assumed that Rome would seek terms once the many wow. contests of armies had been decided. If Hannibal did indeed hold this conventional Hellenistic viewpoint, he may have thought that an attack on Rome would have been more costly than fighting mm. battles in the open but the Roman view of war was straightforward. Destroy or be destroyed. Wow. Rome would not accept any form of defeat, no matter the cost. Mm. They would rather fight to the last man and have an enemy assert their dominance by imposing conditions on its citizens. Perhaps mm. Hannibal still didn't fully understand this in 217 mm. BC. Whatever the case, Fabius began defensive preparations in Rome. While it brings up so many points and sometimes it's hard to know for definite what what the true outcome is until we until new sources come up and new evidence comes up but yeah as the narrator said it would just would have made sense to to take take the capital Hannibal's got the troops men and siege weapons so anyway let's get back into it well, unbeknownst to him, Hannibal turned east towards the Adriatic mm -hmm. coast. A game of cat and mouse between the two commanders is wow. about to begin. Okay. In this video, we provided plausible reasons based on our research yeah. as to why Hannibal didn't attack Rome after Lake Trasimene. We'd certainly like to know what your thoughts are, so if you have any theories of your own, let us know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching. Credit goes to our awesome patrons for supporting our work. Uh.
Okay, that'll do it. This is this has been an interesting video, and um, yeah, there's a lot of um, does seem to be a lot of um, plausible reasons why Hannibal didn't take the capital. So, so I think this other re the reasoning will continue into the next episode. So, so anyway. That this has been an interesting video, another good video by History March. If you like this reaction, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.